welcome to Conscious Living here at the Specially Produce Network. We are so glad you're here to support your lifestyle with the fastest growing resource for conscious families. So sit back, relax, connect, and enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Center for Conscious Kids. Welcome to the podcast living. I mean, sorry. Welcome to the Conscious Living podcast series here live in San Diego at Specially Produce Network. And I'm here live online through Messenger on the iPad with Ava Galette. Welcome, Ava. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. It is so exciting to be here. We're talking about what you're doing and bringing to the world, which is called Dancing Spirit Jaguar Camp. Yes, Dancing Jaguar Spirit Camp is a camp that has been created to give children a spiritual toolbox that empowers them as they're facing challenges in life. So when I first start working with children, I like to tell them that when they go to school, they're nurturing their minds. When they play sports or go outside for recess, they're nurturing their bodies. And when they come to spirit camp, they're learning how to nurture their spirit. That is so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Isn't that wonderful that we have all these different ways to nurture ourselves and to support ourselves so deeply and so so it's spiritually whole, right? Our whole being creates opportunities for growth. Absolutely. So throughout the course of the week, the children really experience their own little personal evolution because they start learning right from the beginning that we are spirit in a human body. and We are made up of energy and they start learning how to work with and how to move the energy in their bodies. And they learn about their chakras and their auras then they um, in another day they're learning about shamanic journeying and how they can do journeying to meet their spirit helpers and learn how to develop a relationship with them and that continues throughout the rest of the week when they learn how to energetically connect to the natural world so by the end of the week the children have not only learned and experienced the energy in and around them but they're learning that they are in fact connected to everything around them because they've experienced it. They've experienced being connected energetically to the majesty of a tree and how profound the wisdom of of a tree is. So it really takes children from the very beginning of the week where they come in kind of not even understanding that they're made up of spirit as well. And by the end of the week, they really are understanding the 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 words we are all one we are and that's so beautiful would you take just a moment to share with us what a shamanic journey means or or what someone experiences when they do that what is that like well there is a technique that i i teach the children where they do um in their mind's eye they take a journey um i'm going to describe the different levels of the shamanic world think of a tree where the tree the tree roots represent the lower world where our power animals live and the trunk represents the middle world which is where we live and the branches of the tree represent the upper world well in spirit camp children learn um, the process of doing a journey um, with their eyes closed, they usually have uh, bring their eyes so that they're journeying in darkness. And they experience going into the lower world and meeting their power animal. And that is such a profound experience for children. And it touches them very, very deeply. In fact, it can be very healing um, for many children if I may digress for just a moment and tell you a story about a child who was having a tremendous amount of 
anxiety going to sleep at night. She had had somebody in her family had recently passed away in their sleep, and she thought that was going to happen to her. But I knew through working with her that her power animal is an owl. So we talked about the fact that at night after she was ready for bed, she could use the rattles she made at spirit camp and call in the essence of owl and ask owl to watch over her at night and wake her up in the morning. And that relationship she had built with Owl was a very trusting one. So immediately her anxiety decreased and that shifted the whole family dynamics at nighttime because the child was no longer fighting sleep and it just made for a really peaceful transition into the nighttime hours for the family. Wow. So there, there are many, many stories of how learning tools like this can really help a child just face the challenges that they're faced with on a daily basis in life. Right. I mean, there's so many, there's so many essences of that. Um, many, many people that I experience, for example, may feel really mired down in their lives. <clears throat> and then mm -hmm. when they experience it, they feel like they're pecking, pecking, pecking at the world. They're pecking for food. They're pecking for shelter. They're pecking for survival. They're pecking for money and these different things. And which is similar to what some birds do on the ground, right? They're pecking for food. And when we help people connect so-called to like an eagle or a large bird that can fly overhead, and really see the bigger picture and see an opportunity. It helps us really connect to the natural world and really see how we can expand our awareness and our understanding and move into these metaphoric and more abstract and yet still very grounded in nature to really understand and really illuminate our thoughts and our abilities to you know, navigate ourselves in the world. Exactly. Uh, another child was experiencing bullying on the playground, and I um, didn't know that, and I was asked to help this child uh, find its power animal, and I found the essence of lion for this child. And uh, after his mom had told him about um, lion being his power animal, uh, he did go to school, and on returning home from school, his mom asked him how his day had been, and he said fine, which surprised her because bullying at recess was a real issue for him. And he told his mom that recess wasn't a problem anymore because Lion was going to recess with him. And just the knowledge that this power animal, which was a lion, was, had his back when he was at recess shifted his confidence level in himself and it started shifting the dynamics between him and the children on the playground so it really can have a profound effect on the children's lives right it's the energy we bring in and the energy we support with while we influence each other many times we don't recognize that those levels of influence actually do promote and support relationships in a very positive way that was a great illustration of how we can connect mm -hmm. to nature and really see the bigger picture for all of us. Exactly. That, that is so and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And aside from the shamanic journeying, children start understanding the healing properties of gemstones and crystals and uh, working with the law of attraction and an attitude of gratitude and they learn how to create sacred space and how to create ceremony so they can do that for themselves and their families when they leave spirit camp. And uh, there was a child who was in a dark place in her life and was starting to cut as her coping mechanism. And during spirit camp, um, she was participating in all aspects of it. But at the end of the week at spirit camp, her grandmother had a stroke and wasn't going to be surviving it. So the mom was very nervous that this child was going to start cutting again, but we reminded her that she had a whole spirit toolbox full of tools that could help her through that process of losing her grandmother. So the child created a fire ceremony for the grandmother and she had everyone in the family write letters to her 
and they read them around the fire and then burned the letters because as the child told her family, the smoke would carry the words up to heaven. So when the grandmother did pass away, she would have letters from all of her family waiting for her in heaven. So the tools that the children get, they can transfer directly into their lives and help them find solutions to deal with situations that they have to deal with on an everyday basis. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. So a lot of emotional healing can also exactly. support us and support the children when they go to camp as well and really connect with that spiritual aspect of themselves. Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. And, and, you know, we're hoping now that um, there's a teacher training program in place for spirit camp. We're hoping that spirit camp is just going to um, spread around the world and, there are many more camps opening up this summer as a result of the teacher training program and the new teachers being certified in this body of work. So if there are people in your listening community that are interested in having spirit camp come to their community or in uh, bringing the teacher training program to the community, um, I invite you to contact us at the website and see what we can do to bring it to your community. Absolutely. It really is changing children's lives. Yes. And it's so beautiful because on your website that you have already spirit camps set up for the East Coast in Virginia and in Maine and then on the West Coast in Canada and Vancouver over the summer, which is a beautiful yeah. time to look in. And it's in June and July this year in 2019. And we so look forward to you all having the opportunity to see what age groups typically go to your camp. Uh, from five up to about 12. And then there's a teen camp that um, I'm running right now just in Maine. Okay. Um, but hopefully as more teachers learn the teen curriculum, we'll also be expanding that. Uh, there are also opportunities for people who live in other countries to learn spirit camp um, where I'm working right now with some people in Mexico excuse me, Mexico City and Costa Rica uh -huh. uh, to bring spirit camp to those countries. So I really, um, I really sense that this is the beginning of a wave of a new way of, of working with nurturing and healing the children in the world. And one of the messages that I have received um, very strongly since the summer is that the world is ready and the children are waiting. They sure are. The children are waiting. And it's so beautiful to have an opportunity to really come out of their typical environments in school and sports like you were talking about and then at home too. And the families have an opportunity to visit you in different areas where you're presenting the camps. And so share with me a little yes, bit about fact, many the families take the their families. summer. Okay. Yeah. Well, families are, are oftentimes taking their summer vacations uh, to enable their kids to come to spirit camp, wherever the spirit camps are now. Um, predominantly, we're in um, Virginia and Maine, or we have been in the past in those two states. So uh, families from other states oftentimes book their summer vacation. Uh, during one of the spirit camp weeks so the children can go to spirit camp and mom and dad have some free time during the day while the kids are at spirit camp and then they can continue their vacation after three o'clock when the kids get picked up and they go explore the community that they're in so for instance in Arlington Virginia if a family is interested in seeing um, Washington DC this summer the, the Arlington Virginia spirit camp is just a few miles from the nation's capital so they could combine the two of those um, and also I always encourage parents to come to spirit camp with their children if they'd like to it's a wonderful way for parents to learn the tools that the children are learning so they can reinforce it in the family after spirit camp ends so I always tell parents it's an open door policy if you can only come in for two hours one day and an hour the next day, but you can come a full day on another day, please come as much as you can because it's going to help spread the teachings to the rest of the family. 
Right. And then how can they uh, support you in, in supporting their children in signing up for these camps? Where best can they find you? At dancingjaguarinspirations.com. And when they go to that website, they'll see Spirit Camp right on the home page. They can click on that and see all of the locations that Spirit Camp is currently being offered this summer. There will be more Spirit Camps added because there are teachers in Maryland, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire who are in the process of being certified right now. And there will be also a teacher training program in Vancouver, British Columbia this summer. So Western Canada will be um, a hot spot for uh, Spirit Camp from moving forward. And then um, after September, excuse me, September of next year, um, I'll be in Portland, Oregon, at, um, presenting a teacher training program, then San Francisco and San Diego. So, so beautiful. It's exciting. It is very yeah. exciting. Lots of different spaces and places that people can experience their whole being, their whole experience, and really deepen and enrich their lives, both spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically so beautiful to incorporate that and you know you had mentioned something about crystals and rocks would you share just a little bit more about what that means for kids and how they connect to that I see it all the time well, but I think sharing these stories are so beautiful well the children um, who come to spirit camp are oftentimes very connected to gemstones and crystals anyway and one of the one of the um, modules in Spirit Camp on Chakra and Aura Day is that the children receive their own little bag of chakra stones. And there's a chakra stone that um, connects to each one of the chakras in our body. And the children start learning how they can use the stones to activate and move energy in their chakras. And on that same day, they make their own pendulums and they learn how to use pendulums in partnership with another person to check someone's um, chakras to see if they're open or blocked. And then they start using the gemstones to activate the chakras that are blocked or closed. So it's a really exciting day for them because they're, they are learning simple tools and techniques that they can use at home to help themselves feel yeah. nurtured and um, whole and centered and grounded. And uh, on that same day, they also how to use, they learn how to use uh, dowsing rods. And I teach them how they can detect how large their aura is by using dowsing rods in partnership with another child. One child is holding the dowsing rods and the other child is on the other side of the room. And uh, the child, um, without the dowsing rods, starts walking toward the one with the dowsing rods. And as soon as the aura is picked up, the dowsing rods uh, cross. Right. And it's so exciting for kids to understand, wow, that's how big my personal space is. <laughs> no wonder it's uncomfortable when people come into my space. Right. So they start having these aha moments that you can see is really helping them make sense of experiences that they're having in life that people don't necessarily talk about. Mm -hmm. Now they understand why people are quiet in the elevators because everybody is in each other's personal space and yeah. it feels awkward. And um, it, it's fun to see them have those aha moments throughout the week. Right, right. And when somebody's really big in the elevator and very animated and everyone's like, what's going on? Uh -huh, <laughs> and they exactly. start to begin to understand how the how our energies are interacting and influencing one another. It's right, so exactly. beautiful. It is so beautiful. And so they take home these tools and they get to use these tools throughout the year and throughout the rest of their lifetime to really understand how we can more deeply relate to one another. We can more deeply interact with one another and we can more deeply really understand how we may influence each other either positively or negatively and then that really gives them a strong sense of that personal choice and I can choose how I'd like to feel or interact and really start exactly. to direct their lives and navigate their lives without 
like bumping into walls and bumping into each other and not knowing what to do next and feeling a little lost or confused. Exactly. And it also gives them a profound respect for Mother Earth. Um, and one of the first things they do um, on, at Spirit Camp on day one is they make this little pouch. We call it their sacred pouch. And I put bird seed in the pouch. But when we go outside to nature and we start looking for pine cones or twigs or something to use in our craft projects, the children learn to sprinkle a little bit of bird seed on the ground as a thank you to Mother Earth for the gifts that she's giving us. And then throughout the course of the week, as they start learning how to work with energy, and then they start connecting with the energy of the natural world, or seeing the auras around the trees, it just opens up a whole different understanding for the kids on how we interact with the natural world and how important it is for us to be respectful and honor the world that we're living in. So I've, I've really seen a big shift in children's attitudes towards uh, Mother Earth throughout the course of the week too. And that's something that is going to stay with them throughout their lifetimes as they're growing up and uh, really have an influence on the world in the future as these children age into adulthood. Absolutely. And as they open up and connect to the, the natural world and each other around themselves and themselves and their inner selves, their gifts begin to emerge really wholeheartedly. And they start to share, I'm really good with music and I'm really good with art and I'm really good with protecting the planet and I'm really good with my emotions and I'm really good with talking with people and so that all their gifts start to really come out and flourish and they really start to understand who they are and how they interact with themselves in the world. It's exactly so beautiful. And the other thing that I think Spirit Camp um, helps supports children with is so many children are are very highly sensitive, can can see spirits or hear voices and see energy and it's difficult for them to find places where they can talk about that without feeling judged or feel like they're they're crazy so i think what's happening what i'm seeing over the past few years is spirit camp is giving a uh, giving children a place to go and talk and communicate with other children who have similar experiences and it really normalizes it for them and my hope is that it will, it will help these children stay open and not feel like they have to conform, as normal is. Yeah. So as they age up into adulthood, they're able to maintain that openness and that connection to spirit that they have as children. Yes, it's so beautiful. And that really does, that helps all of us because a lot of us know and realize that when we grow older and we suppress feelings or thoughts or understandings or mm -hmm. even misunderstandings, when we suppress them, a lot of times that contributes to disease. It contributes to mental exactly. imbalances, emotional imbalances, spiritual imbalances, and then eventually physical imbalances. And those, those stressors build up over the years. And we just really do promote and, and support the whole world and opening up and really being all that you are in all the aspects that you are. You're an emotional being, you're a mental thinking being, you're a physical one, and you're also a spiritual one. And to honor all those aspects of our lives every moment of every day and really learn how to intermingle them. What if they don't have to just be on Sunday? What if it doesn't just have fun, doesn't have to be just on Saturday? What if we can have exactly. fun and spiritual awarenesses all throughout our day, all throughout our lives, even while we're doing work or going to school or doing sports? What if we can do all of them? Exactly. And I have a fun story to share about, uh, I think this child was eight years old, uh, a boy who was getting in trouble at school. And he called me one day at, with his mom's permission and said that he was being sent out in the hallway because he was sticking his tongue out at a friend in the classroom. And he, he said, I have an idea. I'd like to bring a selenite wand in, in, and I'd like to cleanse my aura and just release all of that negativity from my aura. 
And um, he said, I, I wonder if that would work. So of course I told him to try it. And um, he did end up having some really nice results from that. But then he called me again and said, I decided I need to use Peace Breath from Spirit Camp to help me in the situation at school. I'm going to just breathe in. And as I exhale and breathe the word peace, I'm going to think about the person that I'm having issues with in my classroom and send them peace. Because you said sending people peace will help shift the energetic vibration between us, right? And I said, yes. So this child was starting to take tools he learned at spirit camp, this breathing technique uh, where you breathe peace and send peace to somebody you're in conflict with. He was using it at school with someone he was having trouble with in his classroom. And the fact that he remembered that selenite cleanses energy and he could put a selenite wand in his pocket and take it to school with him. I mean, it was just wonderful to me that he was using the tools. He was using nature's tools to promote peace is in himself and in his environment. Yes. That is beautiful. Just think if everyone came to school with those ideas to promote peace and to reduce conflict. Exactly. That's a great start. Yes. And there's another five-year-old girl. I love her story. She was going to school for the first time full days um, after spirit camp started school, started in September and she was taking the bus and she was very nervous about it. And at lunchtime she cried because she missed her mom. And one of the older kids poked fun of her. And, and uh, as she was relaying when she got off the school bus, her mom said, well, how did you handle that? She said, mom, I was fine. I know how to zip up my chakras. I learned how to do that in spirit camp. I just zipped up my chakras and I was fine. So that was a technique that the kids learned how to, how to seal themselves off energetically when they're feeling vulnerable or afraid or like someone is picking on them. It's just a very, very simple technique. But a five-year-old child empowered herself by doing using this technique when she was feeling vulnerable at school and was able to take care of herself. Yes. So self-advocacy and working with oneself is a beautiful tool to begin to understand how to start to resolve things that are in conflict, even if in that moment she didn't know how. That was beautiful. Exactly. Yes. She took care of herself and did what she needed to do to feel safe and protected within her own space. Yes. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. Well, your camp sounds amazing. I am so excited that you're here and that you're doing this for the world and for children and families. It's so well needed. And I'm so excited in the environment of camps because it is such a unique opportunity to come out of our our normal everyday lives and to experience something new and expanding that has an opportunity to carry with us for the rest of our lives and really deepen, enrich, and, and expand ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's a profound experience to witness those aha moments when children realize that there's so much more to them than just their five senses, that we are in fact multisensory beings. Yes, we are. Being that awareness. Yes. It, those, the light in their eyes just gets so much brighter when they have those realizations. It's a beautiful process, and I feel so honored to witness that. It is. It's so wonderful, and, it's, and we're so honored to have you support the world in this way and really administer this type of camp and this type of learning and this type of opportunity to grow and support our communities. Thank you so much, Ava, for joining us and sharing with us your beautiful camp and we look forward to meditations on the children meditation program with you we look forward to hearing more about your camps and keeping us updated on what's growing and what's developing oh thank you so much for having me today ashley and um, i'm so excited because as spirit has said before the world is ready and the children are waiting the children are waiting and, and the world is ready. they are Thank you so much. Yes. And everyone have Thank a you. beautiful day and we look forward to seeing you next time on Conscious Living. Uh, 
Ah, thank you all for listening to this podcast. We are so grateful for you tuning in and experiencing the innovations and opportunities we all can incorporate into our daily lives. Connect with us at centerforconsciouskids.com to sign up for the latest news that showcases these revolutionary services and products. Our global website provides families with an online conduit for enrichment and transformation in all our lives. Please share with other kids and families who would enjoy these advancements in living consciously. I'm Ashley Lee, and I thank you so much for joining us.